Hello, everybody, and welcome to week two of the Pre-Modern Showdown Series 4. I'm Michael Hype. I'm joined in the booth today by Brian Manalakis. I, say hi, Brian. Hey, guys. What's happening? All right. Uh, our first match, we have Christian Weisner up against Rich Shea. I'm just going to jump right over to the band screen. We can briefly talk about the decks that they have and which ones are not available. Uh, so Christian brought the blue-red Stifle Knot list. Uh, red green goblins and then the rock while rich has sly parfait oath and tide control so christian banned the parfait control parfait oath and rich has banned the goblins deck from christian so do you do, is there a deck that you're looking forward to seeing if, if you had to like if, what would be max excitement for you yeah Mano? Oh, well first of all i don't think rich is ever going to play that parfait deck sadly he broke it <laughs> um but so christian it's a no-brainer i want to see blue red stifle not over the rock even though i don't think it's the best stifle not out there it is certainly an exciting version i really hope he chooses that um i do not want to watch a grindy rock match could not care less that said what would i rather play against sly or or um tide control i don't know i guess like swords is really bad i guess probably that versus sly would be a nice quick and tidy and fun match all right uh we will jump over to our deck screen and first up we have christian's deck and he has elected to play the blue red stifle knot list yes yes <laughs> all that was right the one we had to get rich rich we're, we're fairly hedged but we do not want to see the rock thank you christian <laughs> so we have a few flavors of stifle knot in this tournament and Christian has elected to go the blue red route, which I, I guess the biggest draw is like fire ice or just like the burn spells and fling. I guess fling actually has uh, a decent amount of value or like um, utility. So if you're not familiar with with Stifle Knot List, it's pretty simple. You play Phyrexian Dreadnought. It's a one mana 12-12. It's going to die unless you cast Stifle on the trigger or you can also Vision Charm to phase it out. So that's like plan A. And then the backup plan for the, with the blue red deck is just kind of a lot of burn spells and like Grim Lava Mancer. And it, it does have, like I said, Fling, which you don't necessarily need to have Stifle or Vision Charm if they're at 12 or less. You can just Dreadnought with the trigger on the stack, Fling it at them. Uh, so I, I like this deck because it's something that like I remember seeing like when I first started playing pre-modern and then like people just stopped playing it. And then it's it's kind of crept back in the people are playing it again i don't know if anything changed or if it's just like people want to try out something old that's new but i'm excited to see this deck yeah isn't this deck like his baby Does yeah play this a lot uh i mean christian has played a number of decks but i think he's kind of the the person who kind of brought it back onto the scene i would credit okay. him to, for that so yep all right, and looking at what Rich is playing, he is playing the Tide Control deck. So uh, the brief history of the Tide Control, it's kind of an evolution of what Blue-White Standstill was. And when Rich uh, first got into pre-modern, I think he first went to like the Blue-White blue -white Standstill decks. And he uh, eventually moved over to this Tide Control, which was popularized by... Uh, uh, Mark Vogt. Yeah, Mark Vogt, who you had on your podcast. Yeah, he uh, did a he did a nice deep dive. Deep like, dive yeah, on this deck. Videos. So yeah, if you if you want any details on that uh, on this deck, uh, that that podcast that episode is is the one to listen to. So Rich has kind of adopted this style, and uh, the the biggest difference is you have kind of a more proactive game plan with first playing a seal cleansing and then playing a parallax tide, which is the one that can remove lands, and so you kind of have this looming threat, which isn't present in the typical blue white stance list which is very reactive so this one's a little bit more proactive other than that it's pretty similar in the other elements and uh given that it has a, a lot of counter magic and ways to deal with a dreadnought it seems like this could be an interesting match yeah it has four swords and four seals and counters um i think i like rich's side here um that said the blue red standstill deck or the blue red not deck is even more all in than all the other not decks. So with the flings, I think. So we'll we'll see. I guess maybe not because you can just you get in one hit, you get in one fling, and you can nickel and dime the last eight, which is hard. And outside. It, like if a grim lava mancer stays in play, like then I think that that threat of just getting down to like twelve 
then then the fling becomes yeah. a lot scarier. So exactly. Wow. And he even Rich even has two humilities. Like I don't know. This, okay. this seems bad. This seems bad for Christian. All right. Well, let's jump down to the match and see if how this match actually plays out. So if Mano, if you want to let our players message them right begin, now. Uh, we will get started. Looks like I don't know the mulligan decisions. We probably those grips look pretty full. So let me update my card viewer. I do know that Rich won the die roll or the, okay. the rock, paper, scissors roll as he likes to do. So he he's on the play. Coastal Tower go. Probably his best opener. The one thing about blue, red, not is that it doesn't, it looks like he doesn't, or not, it looks like he clearly does not have um, the lotus petals. So maybe it is slightly less solid, a little grindier with gushes. So I could have been off in that first assessment now that I look at him, or I just figured it was because of the flings, but it looks like he can play a little bit of a control matchup. Um, so maybe he's better suited, although duress is a hell of a drug against decks like Riches. All right. I, I got you. About slate versus um portents so i think the i don't i think the decks where you're looking to go faster slight is better i mean i think they're very similar i don't know yeah. i i think a lot of the lists have played portent but um i do like that sleight of hand art i will say <laughs> yeah and there's beautiful white bordered slates which are the ones that i have when i occasionally play them I think there's white bordered Japanese portal slates, which are just unreal. Okay. Those are the I, best ones. I know I have like some some of the white bordered starter ones. So maybe it's just starter. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I, I love playing white border cards when I can. <laughs> I like I prefer all black bordered, but if I get like one white bordered card in, then everything's out the window and all oh, white really? boards can enter. So you're you're all in. Like you're a binge deck builder. As soon as you go off the handle even by one card, it's just like chaos. Well, it depends. Like if it, there's like a city of brass that I don't have a, like a black bordered version, then it's kind of like all right. Or like lightning bolts, I only have white bordered ones of those. So you only have white bordered bolts. I, Jesus. I mean, I started in around onslaught, so right. I never gotta, I never picked them gotta, up. So we gotta remedy this. Okay, so Rich, <laughs> we'll we'll figure out a way to remedy that. Rich is doing great. Christian's doing nothing. He's setting up his mana base. Seal in play. Ton great mana. Uh, the old bolt to the face play, okay? Play my kids love to make. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it might be on a plan where it, if Christian's trying to get him to, to 12, that he has a fling in hand with the, the draw. Oh, I, I like it. I, I think it's the right thing to do. I'm just saying, like, it's funny that this is the line. This is where we're at, you know, in Magic, in this very advanced pre-modern phase where just <laughs> bolt your head, go. Oh, here we go. 12 is the magic number. All right. Well, it might be just because there's... Uh, only one red source, and if he has multiple red spells, he's got to deploy them. So, yeah, which is funny. That's how WinCon two week, three weeks ago was lost on that. The the in the in the finals, the guy didn't. Um, what's his name? I forgot his name. He did not bolt end of turn when the guy would, when his opponent was at six, Stubbo was at six, and he ripped the case bolt with one red source and lost a game. He would have won had he taken this Christian wishy line. All right. Well, the fire ice gets used as the ice mode. So yeah, uh, he's. Rich will stay above that 12 threshold for now as Christian will dig a card deeper. He must have. I was thinking for a second that he gets split fire ice. I was like, could he tap a permanent and deal one? I thought it was like a weird split card for a second. I don't know why it was a brain fart, but yeah. So he taps him out there so he can't potentially play a four mana tide. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Or doesn't tap him out, but taps him down. All right, we got Gush. This is like one of the more powerful spells, I guess, when Christian's not like dreadnoughting people, uh, yeah. getting that card advantage because he does operate at a pretty low land count. So, which is kind of important against like the the proactive game plan we talked about. Rich, if he has a Parallax Tide, a card like Gush can can pick up two islands so that uh, instead of them getting exiled, uh, yeah, though I guess if he has, I guess if he has enough. Um, counters, he can just ex no, I guess he, they get returned as part of the cost, so yeah, they would be protected from that, that combo. But he, either either way, just the fact that he can operate on a couple of lands is mm -hmm. actually pretty good and, and actually makes the matchup not the worst against this um, aggressive Parallax Tide plan. Yeah, he can, He's okay on just two lands, you know? Yeah, because usually the decks that do well against that, that combo are uh, decks that commit to the board. Uh, like, 
an, an aggressive deck because they're like, yeah. okay, I already have a board presence. My lands are gone, but I'm still attacking you. Christian doesn't do that most of the time. I mean, sometimes he'll have a 12-12. But, uh, but yes, his deck could, in theory, get like Armageddoned and then still recover pretty quickly because it, it really only takes two mana to, to assemble what he's trying to do. Yeah. This does, all, all that said, this doesn't look great for, um, for Christian. Despite the fact that he's already got rich to to thirteen, which is approaching the magic number. Yeah, the the tricky thing is like I don't I don't know what the counterspell lineup in in game one for Christian, but I think it's more of like soft permission, like days. There's a couple of foils, I think. Okay, and there might be prohibit as well, um, which. Well, is... let's see what he has. He has four dazes. Okay. Man after my own heart. He has four dazes, one miser's mana leak. Love it. And two foils. All right, we do, do do see a daze on a factor fiction, and so that is a a, a good use of that daze. Holy um, shit! I turned away to look at the deck list, and that's what just happened. Yes. Oh my god! I guess the answer was that it was fiction. Uh, can you can you play that spell like that if you're rich? Uh, you if he that? has uh, multiple four drops, or if he's like feels like he needs to hit land drops and he needs to, then it's probably something he needs to run out. Like something is gonna well. I would say not necessarily something is going to get dazed because at this the, point it's turn six and he has four lands. He waits for a fifth land and he could just let those dazes sit around forever. So yeah, I, I don't, don't know, know if he has a fifth land and that's uh, might be. Yeah, that's clearly what he's doing, right? He's cycling yeah. decree, you know, like whatever. Um, but I still don't know if I would do that. I guess it depends on his hand and what, what stuff he's drawing into. So Christian representing another days and a mana leak and always representing foil, obviously. We got the Lonely Sandbar coming in and play yeah. tapped, so. He has a Lonely Sand. Gotta, gotta respect a deck that plays Forbidden Watchtower, right? I mean, come yeah. on. That's just, that's so hot. All right, well, the, the burn kind of plan is, just with the Grim Lava Mancer, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going to be an eighth card. So, I mean, there's potentially four activations of that Grim Lava Mancer. So, eventually, I think this yeah. will need to be answered. I'm trying, I mean, I, I would imagine if Rich had a Swords, he would probably Swords it because he already has the seal. Um, so that thing might, it could just go the distance. So chat was asking if it was a decree for zero. I think uh, Rich just did the technically correct thing of where you cycle the card and yeah. then there's the trigger and then you pay for it. Um, and I... Uh... He definitely did. That's, yeah. that's how he plays that card. I, I'm trying to think if there is... I don't know if the interactions with Stifle, I guess... You would just oh, because you can stifle the the cycling trigger. So, and I think that wouldn't. I think that would both deny the card and the guy, right? But you're and, still going to pay the mana, so it doesn't yeah. really doesn't really matter. I don't think there's an advantage to doing it that way. It's just that it's the actual rules of magic. Yeah. But who cares about the rules of magic? <laughs> Some people love the rules of magic. Yeah, I mean, imagine that. <laughs> So now Rich is developing his mana, and... There are a lot of burn spells that, that yeah. Christian's had. End of turn, ping you. Okay. I wonder he if... He does not have a swords, right? Like... Uh, yeah, I mean, because with the seal cleansing, I think the seal cleansing, you probably feel pretty safe against the, the Dreadnought. Though, as the game goes longer, the nice thing about the Dreadnought decks is a card like seal cleansing can be protected with an additional copy of Stifle or Vision Charm. Yep. So um, maybe Rich is being conservative and... and Either way, that, you know. that Grim Lava Mancer, I mean, it, it's going to slowly turn on all the rest of his burn. Actually, he's used almost all of it, right? He's used three Fire Ices and three Bolts. Yeah. So that, that Grim Lava, Man that Lava Mancer is going to have to do pretty much everything else. Uh, so I would love to see the game end by a Grim Lava Mancer being flung. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> One one little measly point of damage. End of turn two, my yeah. turn two, flee. Yeah. yeah, that would be hot. All right, Factor Fiction does resolve. Usually you win the game when that happens. Let's see. Foth, Decree, Factory, Seal, Island. Ugh. I mean, it's it's definitely a 3-2 split. Yeah, I'm just going to sit back and let, let this happen and not try and yeah, okay. <laughs> make two... Factor fiction splits are hard, and especially like when I don't know what's in Christian's hand, it's going to be pretty, 
pretty tough. That's a really good point, right? Like us trying to hypothesize is pretty stupid because he has five unknowns in his hand. Yeah. Looks like we're looking at seal cleansing, factor fiction island against the Mistress Factory and Decree. That said, I, I do feel like Factor Fiction feels like the best card there, so I might have put it in the two pile. Let me see how many decrees Rich is actually playing. Okay, he, he does opt for the the bigger pile. All right, he's playing three decrees. So and he has no Rich slowly assembling this um Mutant Atog that's spread across multiple islands. <laughs> and here we have the Parallax Tide. So this is kind of that proactive combo that, that we had talked about. But, I mean, here, even if, if this goes and Christian's three lands get exiled... Honestly, part of the problem here is that, and one of the reasons blue red not just isn't, I don't think quite as potent is the mana sucks, and he doesn't have that many red mana sources in his deck, and two of them are on the board, and I feel like he doesn't have a third, and so this could really slow down this grim lava mancer, you sure. know, that's that's quietly on a three and a half turn clock. I mean, it, it could be something that if Christian had a red source in his hand that he's been sandbagging in anticipation yeah. of a play like this. Entirely possible. Hopefully he is, because I'm rooting for this to end sooner rather than later. But, <laughs> wow, Bolt. Case Bolt. All right, that resolves. So Rich is going to fall to five. And that's starting to get to the point where it's a little bit scary, because I have to assume the Scribble Lavamancer is going to get activated, unless there's a counter magic fight. Which... I wonder how we, how do we feel in retrospect about those fire ices icing? You know, it's easy, very easy to say now, but I think it's fine. Like, I it might be like he was looking for a second half of like a fling dreadnought combo. Yeah. Though you kind of have to expect if the game's gone this long that it's not going to resolve. So I don't know. Maybe you, but can't... you might just have to power through, play one, sure. try to fight over it, let it get countered, and then try it again later. You know, I don't know. It's um, these are all very niche um close decisions okay so uh, foiling uh, looks like yeah christian tried to foil um or tried to daze uh, that got paid for and then foil with the Don't island you have to discard a blue card for foil no it's an island and another card and any other card yeah okay. all right no daze so that's that's going to resolve he has no other options he can ping him here down to three mm -hmm. but three feels safe because all four bolts are in the graveyard so it's, yeah. it's safe ish safe ish uh yeah so i mean i, I don't know like he's still gonna have at least two islands in his hand if he has a red source he's actually like just not that bad rich just cl clearly does not have a swords and he's going to be dead very soon new follow from uh a hair Tyco, so welcome, welcome. All right, so here we have the activation from the Grim Lava Mancer. How did that Dreadnought... Oh, was there another foil? Is that how that oh. Dreadnought got discarded? No, he might have just changed his graveyard order. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I don't even know if that's a legal magic play. So he didn't well, play a land? Oh, he discarded his land. His I think it was just... I think he just exiled like the top cards and... That so I don't I don't know if he actually changed the order. I think he just oh, certain cards got exiled with Grimob. I see, I see. Yep. Because if all if all the cards are irrelevant, I would say that one little token that was cycled is just. I know it's so out. annoying, right? He's, it was it's kind of subtle that it's just in the corner of the play map, but it's like I was thinking I'm like, well, he might just get in for three the last few times. There's no Mishra's factory, but yeah, that one one soldier is still waiting to block. This is a race between like swords versus mountain, you know. Okay, that's that's something. That's pretty important. Yep, I mean, that so, just does it all. That does it all, right? Um, now, now Dreadnought's a 1-1. One, one, like, well, I mean, it, but it is a 1-1 one, one that you can just cast, and it would stay true. in play. He can cast all the mons, all the mons he wants. Yeah, so, like, that could unlock... I mean, there still is a seal cleansing in play, so, like, I don't know, like, the Scrimmelava Mancer attacks, it gets traded, and then maybe you cast a 1-1... One, one, it gets disenchanted or seal cleansing. I don't know. 
Yeah, th- this final three might be difficult for Christian to, to push because yeah. because so much of his burn has already been used. Right, he has no bolts, and I think he has one fire ice, and now his Grimbomb answers are all dead. So, and all of his flings deal one damage. So he's he's you know he's very unlikely to win. Sadly, it's going to take twenty minutes. Uh, so I'm looking if there's cards like Boomerang or something that get rid of humility. I don't think there is. So. Vision Charm would only get rid of artifacts. So that one, there's Barbarian Rings. Ooh. Um, so, but that would need two sources. Of red, right, which is... That's so take getting him to two would be very good. And especially because Barbarian Ring is not something that can be countered. So yeah. I think if he gets to, to, to two, then... But I guess probably by that point, um, Rich might be able to have like a Swords and like Swords Your Own Guide again, gain a life. Yep, but uh, Barbarian Ring might be a, a role player in the in this match. Rich is down to just the one decree left in his deck too. So yeah, the other way he can win does he have an opalescence or anything? Let me doesn't. Add. So okay. it's really his own. And he has he has manlands, obviously. Sure, but that's okay. that's the only way. I guess that's that's enough probably because all the burn is gone, so all his manlands are completely live. A forbidding watchtower might get in there. <laughs> exactly. If only those Adakar Waste were City of Brasses, those, those three Fire Ices would have been GG's. <laughs> yeah. What did Rich do? He end of turn removed that, that land? I guess. I was, I was not watching. Uh... This is another. Yeah, this is spiraling. He was so close. Yeah. That's how it usually is against Rich. You think you're going to get there, and then he, you know, does his does his Rich things. I mean, I I did like the like the icing, but now kind of like how close it was. I wonder if the game would have been different with a fire ice that might have been able to be deployed. Because it seemed like he had a lot of counter magic, right? So if he taps out for Tide with Seal on board, A, Christian doesn't seem to care that much. B, he had Gushes. C, he had a ton of counter magic, right? So I don't know about that icing unless he was digging, like you said. That's the only real reason. Yeah, I mean, the game was very different at that point when he was icing. Yes. So he, Maybe he didn't know he was going to draw all four bolts. Oh, he has Cunning Wishes. There must be some, some sweet... Uh, What's in his sideboard? What's he gonna get here? A dominate. <laughs> Just is there a dominate still? Um, um, no. There is no dominate. There is an absorb. That's that's pretty good. Sure. That's yeah. Other than that, there's not like anything like too exciting in this situation to grab with with cunning wish. But I think absorb. I like, bet it's absorb. Right. That's that's a pretty great one here. Absorb is un unreal because all of his cards only do one now. So absorb is like ancestral. Sure. Actually, better, right? Counter yeah. three of Christian's cards and um, counter the, actually counter the card he wants to counter. A Mistress Factory has come down, so that's at least a clock for uh, yeah. Rich. Oh, he can stifle the yeah, the leaves, play trigger the tide. That's what happened. So, oh hi, yes. As I was looking at deck lists again, I missed an important point. Cast Dreadnought. Cast a 1-1. One, one. Um, yeah, that resolves. Absorb? No. Oh, he, ser he searched for the Stifle. Oh, he drew the Case Decree. Okay. All right, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1-1s. One, okay. Well, well should... I mean, Christian can fight this with like a card like Stifle. That he can deny... How does how does this timing work? I honestly don't know. So I okay because I I'm not hundred percent sure because decree of justice it you cycle it for three and the cycling has the thing of like draw a card trigger so I think it and then I think it also has a trigger of the one you cycle it so I think you can stifle either of those either triggers trigger. as a card okay. 
or the thing i don't think like this i don't think like cycling is something like that goes on the sta stack right the two it's just the draw card, card the dudes i think triggers. so he did siphle presumably the make dudes trigger but rich countered that which just gave him two less dudes but now he's up six to two in dudes and a mistress factory yeah so and with i don't think like i said i don't think there's a way for like christian to bounce because that would be really cool to like bounce the humility though i guess there's still the seal cleansing in play so yeah. is that a deck in pre-modern humility play my own dreadnought for free bounce humility attack for 12 that could be a deck so he played a second seal killed the one one attack with all these guys yes I think you clearly keep one guy back because of the barbarian ring. Yeah. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. That's a three turn clock. Something. All right. Down to 12. Rich just needs to. The only thing I could see is like sneaking in a point and like Rich forgetting about barbarian ring. But yeah. I don't think you're going to... Rich is not yeah. the kind of man who forgets about Barbarian Ring, though. Yeah, I don't see how you're... There's not a good way to really sneak in that point. Because he did leave a token back. Oh, wow. Oh, so there's this tapping. Okay, that Prohibit. gets prohibited, GGs. obviously. GGs. That's the actual... I think that's his fourth one. So he drew all eight burn spells in those cards. That's insane. That's a very old school... Uh, way to win the game, right? Just throw all my burn at your face. Yeah. Prohibit also seems like a, a underplayed card in pre-modern. Yeah, it it definitely has been like championed by some people that like, uh, for most for the most part, it's just like an easier to cast counterspell. Um, but yeah. yeah, the decks where the mana is an issue, it is is very good especially i like it in the dreadnought decks because at protecting your dreadnought almost all the answers to it cost two or less so yeah. it for that purpose it is just pretty much easier i agree but. i like it and that should be it yeah i think christian's just gonna fall a little bit short um but yeah it was definitely felt like he was just inches from from taking this first game but I think that was, a is... very, that was a very weird game. Yeah, this is this is over. I don't know. Christian's just like hoping that yeah. Rich like yeah. plays a card before tapping his lands, you know, a la David Mills. And <laughs> he got he got DQ'd in the finals for doing that. That's what that was really his only out there, I think. All right, let's jump back over to the decks and we can maybe figure out how the players are going to sideboard. So there are some interesting options for, for Christian here. So uh, Annulls seem fine. Red Blast seem good. Black Vices I can see coming in. Boomerangs are reasonable. Like Boomerang just in an early turn, just boomerang a land. I can also see like, while it still has the utility to get rid of like a, a humility or something, like just kind of setting uh, Rich back on, on lands. I can see that coming in. Yeah. And then potentially even like Price of Progress. Dude, you uh, could bring in, you could just like remove your knots, right? Like Rich is going to keep, has to keep in all his seals and stuff, I imagine. So you just remove this knot package. Remove the knots, remove the Disney charms, shave a stifle or two. I mean, fling actually is really bad. How many cards is that? Four plus three plus three, that's 10. Maybe a stifle, that's 11. But you bring in two annuls plus four vices, that's six. Two boomerangs is eight. Um, Red Elemental Blast is 10. Price of Progress is 11. That's a clean 11 card swap. If you want. I, that, that I would keep in the Stifles because if you're bringing like Vices to protect against like Seal Cleansing, um, the the vis I guess Vision Charm also protects it. Um, you could phase it out. Oh, um, no, no. I was going to keep in Stifles. I was going to maybe cut one. But either way, I thought for a second I was stranding his Seals. But you're right. If he brings in Vices, it's the same thing. So yeah. that's, that's actually not great. Well, I mean, the the source of postures lose a little bit of utility if you're taking out the the dreadnought i mean like grim movements are still a target but um yeah it might the matchup might just be so bad he has to try and do that i think he might just be going that route i would not be surprised yeah just I, try, I, try to get lucky and vice vice boomerang burn him out so i feel like like christian gets a lot better like he has a, a lot of options and like a lot of play to what he wants to do like however what direction he wants to take it 
he can yeah. do it with the sideboard. So it, it, these next two games could be very different than what, well, maybe similar to how that game played out, but like very different than what his deck normally tries to do. Rich actually has a cop red in his board, so it makes those boomerangs even juicier, I think. Um, that one seems pretty good. That might be the only real card, right? What does Mangar's Blessing actually do? All oh. your creatures gain pro something? Oh, no, I that's the gain five life, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the gain life card. So it might just be cop red. What's really dead in Rich's deck? Anything? These all do something. Replenish is okay. Yeah, all of his cards are pretty good. So I could see him literally doing a one card swap. Let's see how many cards he puts down on the board. Does he do like the whole 15? Does he try and play mind games? Or is he just going to be like, look, I know it's the cop red. <laughs> I haven't been watching. I have I have not seen it, but I guess we could yeah. jump back over. Um... Oh god, you put the decks up. Did we do the decks in the right order? We did, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was not watching the stream. I was watching. I was looking at the deck list. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that game went almost exactly as planned. Christian putting up a good fight, getting super close, but Rich's deck gaining control and doing what it does. I still. Don't know how I feel about that factor fiction into four dazes, but Rich is better at magic than me, so I, he's probably just right. You know, I'm willing to defer to him there. It does seem like Rich sideboarded extremely quickly, so he's probably on the one cop red plan. I'm very interested to see what Christian does. Also, this vice play is infinitely better on the play right so if he's going to do it it's got to be now and then if he manages to squeak out game two he keeps rich guessing in game three does the vices stay in on the draw does he go back to his not plan who knows um but there's some mind games at least yeah the the vices if it comes out early it forces rich to react and that could lead to him playing a card like seal cleansing which would be his cleanest answer to that yeah. like with, with low amounts of mana it could like i don't know if the dazes are still in the deck but th those could be better. And then also, like, I guess it's hard because um, Rich could untap and then seal and have, like, counter magic. Because if, if Christian has a vision charm or a stifle to protect his black vice, then at least Rich can kind of time it when he wants to to get more mana up to, to protect his seal of cleansing activation. I, yeah, that, I just, I mean, that's, if that is all stuff is happening, it's not going great for Christian. I think... I don't really know that Rich can beat a turn one vice if he does not have a seal. I might just be game, right? Like, what are his? What can he actually cast? He can cast his cop red out of his board. That's about it. So he can just say go vice go, and that is that's GG's. Um, if he doesn't can't play any other spells, if he doesn't let Rich cast prohibit or mana leak or counter spell or anything, so he basically would force. He has to be doing this. Christian is definitely doing this. This is too good. This is too potent. And it keeps him guessing for game three. He's definitely doing it. Vice, Vice, do it. Oh, he took, <laughs> took a mana. All right. Lava Mancer, go. The poor man's Vice. <laughs> Cycling to play around, or fetching now to play around Stifle, presumably. Another good use for Stifles, though, right? Like slightly hurting Rich's mana. Um, in, a, in a game, in a sideboarded game where he doesn't need them for knots, that he can just use them. He can just willy-nilly toss them around the board. Mm -hmm. Rich's um, basics are phenomenal, by the way. All these Jesper signed um, betas and the Atog basics. And the, like you said, the the, um, <laughs> the islands that all connect to build a big one. Although his island of choice, I mean, I'm, I'm dark betas for life, but I can respect the pink beta. Well, that's the swords he was missing last game. Swords Grim. Yeah, that'll yeah. put uh, Christian back up to 20. Oh, God. This is bad. Yeah, I guess. Well, maybe he didn't do the vice thing. It's possible he didn't do it. So then, then he's drawing live. But if he did the vice thing and this is what's happening, it does not seem very good. I mean, yeah, I don't know the composition of, of Christian's deck because I don't know what, which plan he's on. And. I mean, if you if the vices are in your board and you're on the play in game two against, it has to be now, right? It's now or never. So, like literally, he loses if he goes vice. If he goes vice, go on the play, and Rich does not have a seal. That is game over. 
Yeah, so, I do. I do agree. Oh, we do see a dreadnought. So right. So we did not do that. When? when well, is that's he not. That I mean, like, unless there's just he's over, like overloading the seal cleansings or overloading the responses and just like I don't know what other cards you'd be taking out. Like maybe maybe, he maybe he's taking line. out cards like Bolt and. But those th that works perfectly with Vice, right? You know, like theoretically, yeah. it works better with Vice than Dreadnought because it's not all in. You Dreadnought, you just need Dreadnought. Vice is chippy with Bolts and Isis, so. Well, I, I mean, quite... the sequence that Christian has right now is pretty good. Yeah, was, a Swords has already been used, and so. I imagine that Rich is more aggressive with that Swords because he put Christian on the the Vice Bolt plan. So maybe Christian leveled him, <laughs> you know, and got him to burn a sword that he would need to kill this knot. But now he's going to be able to play land. If he has foil, he's in great shape. But if he has land seal, he can't even daze it. Oh, he can't even daze it anyway. He played back-to-back. -back oh, yeah, this, so. the Shivan Reefs have been played. This is bad. <laughs> foil? All right, yep. With Oh, God. Okay. Okay, so seal cleansing was found, and that respond or that answers the the dreadnought so ill two for one yep. and yeah this is really not looking good for christian but it never was right like we said before this match started this is a very uphill battle i imagine it's it's probably 70 plus Flor flores would put it like 84 16 i imagine i don't know i like i i wouldn't be that upset to be in christian's position especially like with the sideboard like I feel like he has a lot of play to how like how the game will sh be shaped. So I don't know. Like I feel like you have some agency of how this matchup plays. So. No, you're you're right. And one thing that I always that I often do is overlook sideboard how how matchups change post board. And his his boy his game one matchup is pretty terrible, but it changes a lot, especially if he does this vice thing. That said, he lost game one and didn't do a vice thing and got his dreadnought killed on turn two. So it's not looking not looking great. At least Rich doesn't have two man, two blue mana. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. No answer for that. He can boomerang it, and he can try and mana leak it or whatever right now. I feel like you've got to mana leak that. It's really bad for you. Ugh. <laughs> Not quite the same as mana leak. No, use, no. Your, use your lightning bolt. Though I meant just keep that lightning bolt because there is like a mistress factory in play, but... If you're, um, if you're I, bolting factory, you're dead, right? So, like, he's got to just pretend that's not a thing. Yeah, I guess. But, like, the, this burn plan, like, a burn plan isn't going to work against the circles now either, right? I don't yeah, his, only th his only chance is to boomerang it and counter it on the way back down. But he's already down a million resources and down and isn't making land drops. Um, the only thing he has going is that Rich can't actually cast the card counter spell. That's his only chance. Well, if... I can see, like, I like Christian's line. Like, it makes a lot more sense if he gets him to 12 and then he still has, like, Fling and Dreadnought in. Then then you can, like, boomerang the um, circle and you don't need to counterspell because you're just looking for right. a window to, to fling the Dreadnought. That is a great, great point that I overlooked, obviously, because... Though, I guess, I mean, maybe at this point he's just looking to kill him with the regular 12-12 plan and not fling and just, um, just do it the old-fashioned way of attacking. I mean, like, the... the the clock is ticking or the time is time is ticking because there's swords of postures and seal cleansings and counter magic and all the things that that rich can find humilities there's a lot of problematic cards but uh at least there's something that in theory that christian could do i imagine this is an ice i presume ice your island end of turn carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wants on his turn which is presumably not much but i guess it's better than nothing Looks like are those Japanese like, foil fire ices? That's kind of hot, actually. I can't tell if they're foreign, but they do they definitely look, look foil. So they definitely look foreign. So okay. well, so together I mean, identify something. <laughs> yeah, we put it together between our two deductive skills. Yes. Oh, the old turn five vice as Rich is on four cards. Oh God, Christian, you drew your cards in the wrong order, man. Come on. Maybe, uh, um, Rich will cast Factor Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A disenchant will will answer one of the black vices and then get a card out of Rich's hand. Rich so. brought in a disenchant. Let me yeah, see. I mean, it, they're all the relevant like big threats are artifacts. So did he just cut his cunning way? Like, I think you kind of want that on your board to wish for, right? You want one out, I would imagine. Uh, oh, well, know. the the theory might be is like if you're in situations against like an early vice that like having cunning wish in your hand is 
like a lot clunkier than just having a disenchant like the yes. amount of damage you would take if if your plan is to cunning wit like hit three lands cunning wish and then disenchant um you take a lot another, more damage another great point it's yeah. clear that i don't know why you're saying you haven't looked at these lists because you clearly know your way around this matchup and this format because every time i say something you're like no dude it's obviously because of this and you've been right every time so i just like to theorize i don't know i don't i think no, no, you're absolutely <laughs> right that is 100 percent what rich did and i guarantee that's what he was thinking he does not want to get shut down by a turn one vice that gives him a fifth seal right that gives him one more card to draw to make him not lose immediately so it's a no-brainer Rich has found a second island, so now he does have blue, blue. This Grim Lava Mancer, I guess it's good at holding the Mistress Factory at bay. Yeah, it's not the world's best Grim Lava Mancer, but it's, I guess it's not the worst either. The worst one was last game. I mean, the one last game did it like eight damage, didn't it? No, no, I mean, once humility. Oh, yeah. okay. Early on, that was insane, but. All right, so he end of turn. Wished for something. All basics. That price of maybe his riches playing around price of progress that Christian probably brought in. Though I guess just having circle is pretty good protection just against the price. So. Oh yeah, of course it doesn't do anything now, but I mean maybe that was his plan in drawing basics. So he's drawing the good cards, the good parts of his deck. All right, so no lands and still at 13 life and a million permanents for Rich and okay. Your Lava Mancer will attack and that You gotta will... try. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta try. Yeah. It's like when they have Maze of it's an old school. You always gotta try. <laughs> That's a million cards. That's like six cards. Well, if Rich doesn't have land drops, then... I wish I could see. Maybe it's only five. Maybe it's because this could be the first turn he takes vice damage. Five Factor Fiction? Holy shit! <laughs> we, he already played his Disenchant, so this vice is going to turn on. Do you ever 5-0 this? <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> I'd love to see it. <laughs> I was thinking about 5 0 earlier. Let's see what these cards are. Oh, none of these do anything. Four lands and an impulse? We got 4 1. Is he 4 1 it? No, what? So then he just gets impulse right now, right? And he still has five cards in his hand. Oh, you got to give him some more cards, right? You got to at least <laughs> throw a land or two with the. You got to throw two lands in with the impulse. Maybe we're wrong and Rich doesn't have that many cards in his hand. You know, I, I don't know. I look like he had five. Yeah, it does. He just put four down. He put a fifth on. So he, he cycled Factor Fiction into Impulse and cycled Impulse into a fifth card. So he's going to take a damage now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if people were saying whether it should have been a 5-0 or not. Um... I don't know if it should have been a 5-0, but I know it should not have been a 4-1. It should have okay. definitely been two lands with the Impulse, right? Okay. I mean, it depends on how optimistic I think you are about this Black Vice. Like, Does he have any other outs? He has no lands and cop red in play. He has, like, literal sure. no outs, right? So, like, at this point, I feel like he has to just move all in. All of Rich's cards say draw a card, so... That's true. Or they're counterspells. So, like, if he just says go... Decree of Justice will... Um be a nice way just to shorten the number of turns that Christian has. So Right, exactly. And he's still going to take another one now. This could have been two or three damage. Right? Right? Like that's, if he puts two two islands, I guess he just, right? If he, if he puts two lands in either, if he goes at three, two there, he's taking, he's at seven now. And he has a vice in play he still has to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's got to be the play. Maybe he was just so tilted. He's like, fuck my life. I'm sitting here with no mana and a stupid 1-1. One, one, and um, <laughs> I get it. I tilt. I do that all the time. So it's fine. All right. The soldiers are coming in. Christian will go to 11. It's a tie game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why are Rich's soldiers behind his lands? What the hell's going on here? He's like not he's, a lands in front guy in general, is he? He's not. I don't know. He's not. I would say a lot of times I, I don't feel like I see Rich summoning creatures very often, so. Yeah, this is weird. To see. No, that's not true. He I plays, guess he played Sly, and I don't think they were behind last No, week. that's what I mean. I would have noticed if they were behind. So this might just be weird because they're tokens, so I guess we can let this pass, but just for everyone watching, lands in front is not okay. <laughs> I'm I'm less definitive about that. I don't really care. No, no, that's not. It's not. Um, it's not subjective. There's no. <laughs> you can't. Who used to do it? Adrian Adrian Sullivan used to do. Oh, that's just it. Okay. Yeah, it was that camera thing. So it looks like Christian lost his hand. He says, "I got a bunch of spells. I don't have any mana." Now, he drew, black he drew his but... on turns five, six, and seven. You know, yep. if that was turns one, two, and three, this game is over in a heartbeat. Uh, if you want to send a message to the players and let them know that we can, they can unmute us and we will unmute them, uh, we will try and listen in and maybe get some insight from the players now that we have our sound working. So Dre and Not so. Play against uh, goblins or sly, it's really good. Yes, yes, yes. Nope. Well, then. Uh, right. Thanks for the games. Thanks to you, and well, I see you next week <laughs> and in the other match. And I don't know if I I had to to play against you in the in the monthly. I don't know. Uh, I actually haven't looked. I'm just waiting for someone to tell me whom I need to play against. Okay. Well, well man, see you. All right. Bye for now. Bye bye. Well, it looks like our players are making an exit, so I guess we can kind of just uh, summarize kind of uh that match real quick but yeah the i think the first game it was like uphill battle just on paper for for christian and uh he got close i it definitely felt like um if maybe cards were in a little bit different order that he might have been able to sneak out those last three points yeah. but uh the control deck took over and made quick work after after that turning point and then the the sideboard i don't know i was pretty optimistic on being for christian being able to um find a way to really punish rich but uh the black vice didn't come down early and the the dreadnought was answered so i'm, I'm curious what he sideboarded out of he didn't go all in and just brought in the vices and like if you keep vices and all the not stuff like what do you even cut like well because we saw bolts and fire ices he has to keep in the damage if he's playing the vices right he has to so did he cut did he cut like counter magic and he maybe. just moved all in you know maybe that's it Maybe shave days is after board shaving days. Although on the play they're better, but like Rich, I don't, I don't know. He's gonna play. He's not gonna play around him when he, you know, anyway. Or he is. He knows when to play around them anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't know. Right. Maybe just mana leak and, and foils gone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna bring up the schedule. So, um, we originally on our schedule we have, um, we had Ryan up against you mano but unfortunately ryan is uh in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> he lives in florida and he's been impacted by the weather and he had contacted me yesterday saying that he was up without power and didn't know if he'd make it and i haven't heard from him so um i think from his facebook post his wife had said that they're okay but i think they're still just uh without power so we're not gonna be able to play our second match um but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna skip ahead and go to our match against uh BK against Mike Flores, so um, yeah. Let's get them. Let's get them in the room. Let's get the show on the road. I'll message those guys. And we're, so you're able to stick around, right? And um, and stay in the booth. While, so yeah. okay. Um, I'm gonna set up my slides. We're gonna get things oriented for our next players, and we will be back shortly.